Now about myself, um, I I have been in this uh, financial service sector for over 10 years, and I currently uh, ta is tasked with uh, providing client with a uh, technical analysis, okay, on forest and on uh, stock index, particularly Asian stock index. Um, I was I was trained as a mechanical engineer, and I like system, mechanical systems, and uh, well. It, it has some resemblance with the technical analysis. I will show you why. Okay, now, now today uh, in uh, 40 to 45 minutes, I will walk you through our uh, market outlooks for this year on stock index and on forest. And uh, it is not it is not a technical analysis uh, lessons, which uh, you will find it quite boring. Okay, I will give you one. Uh, PowerPoint slide, and then off we go. We, I will give you the meat of today's program. Okay, just a little bit about uh, technical analysis. So, in fact, we have uh, in general two kinds of uh, analysis uh, in the investment uh, speculation world: uh, technical analysis and fundamental analysis. On fundamental analysis, we look at a company's uh, balance sheets, uh, their accounts, uh, PE ratio, uh, book to value ratio, blah, 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 something like this. But on telecom analysis, we don't look at those things, okay? We just look at these things. Now it is on the, on the PowerPoint. We look at three key premises. Market action discounts everything. So everything has been discounted on the price that is on the charts you are going to read, okay? Second, we, history repeats itself. We, we, we like look at what, what uh, level we achieved before, and then uh, what, what bottom we achieved before, what peak, peak level we achieved before, and then that will be support or resistance level, okay? Easy to understand, right? And then the third one is very important in telecom analysis trends okay we are we spend a lot of energy and time in finding out in noticing any price trends in any charts okay if there is a trend rely on it if the trends change direction uh, we, we we change direction altogether if there's no trend we wait that's it it's simple right okay now this is the telecom analysis abc for today finish and then I will give you the main course. Now, first of all, for the first part of this webinar, we are talking about uh, stock index, okay? So whenever we, we talk about stock index, um, we have to look at the stocks of one country. You know which one? Yes, you're right. The US stocks. It is, the US stocks are the big brothers are the big brothers of all stocks, okay? Now, Dow Jones, industrial, okay? Uh, yes, we have, uh, we have two days in, in, um, in early February, we have over 1,000 point drops, okay? In, in, uh, in two separate states. Yes, we, 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 see, uh, we saw a correction of 10% from the peak level. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial and also the S&P 500, they peak, they have a recent high uh, recorded on the 26th of January, okay? And they spent all the February uh, dropping and rebounding, dropping and rebounding. But as you can see on this chart, so you can see this chart, right? Uh, now, uh, uh, one, one thing I want to point out also, today I will show you a, a simple bar chart. This is a bar chart. And um, and uh, we are showing a weekly chart. Why? We are looking for long term. We are looking for the whole year, 2018. Okay, so we are going to show you a bar chart, weekly bar chart. One bar represents five trading days. Okay, it is a, that is a, a one trading week. Okay, so you can see that even though we have a 10, percent correction in US stocks. Look at this Dow Jones Industrial. We still have a quite intact rising trend line. Drawing through uh, the, the later part of 2016. Okay, so at this point, 
we are still bullish on this uh, index. Ah, one one more point I I want to point out. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Ah, sorry. I just want to uh go to the next chart. Uh, where should I go? Sorry, uh, let me see. Yeah, now uh, I showed you the uh, uh, Dow Jones Industrial. We are bullish on this one. And also S&P 500, we are st also bullish. You can see the rising trend line is still intact. Now, in trading central, you you uh, you may be puzzled by those colors the line. It is easy. The green lines means up target. Okay, there are three green lines. It means our upside targets. And on the um, bottom, we have red lines, horizontal lines. They are downside targets. And the blue line, the uh, this one. The fresh blue line horizontal line is the pirate point. This is a very important uh, level. Whenever a price change from the top across to the bottom of this, uh, to the other side of this line, we have to change our wheel. Okay, no matter what, we have to change our wheel. At present, the price is still comfortably trading up on the upside of this um, pirate point for. S&P, it is 25.40. So we are, we say we are still bullish on this track, on this uh, index. Okay, uh, in Dow Jones Industrial, our pirate point is set at 23,000. Likewise, the last up composite, our pirate point, we are still bullish long term, okay, our price point is at 66.45. Now, uh, we have experience, and in fact, it, you, you can find it quite uh, easily that the US stocks are very resilient, okay? They they bounce back after 10% drop. In particular, we found this last step composite. It means the technology shares. They are much more resilient. They are rebound, we found that we bound is more powerful. All right. So um, after looking at the US dollars, this is the uh, European stocks. Stock 50, Euro stock 50. Now, one more teleco, one more teleco ABC. This is a double bottom. After we see a double bottom, we, we say it is, it is a reversal pattern. It is reversing from bearish to bullish. However, we can see that the momentum of the European stocks are not quite strong. It's not quite strong as the US stocks. So at the moment, you can see that our price is placed under the Brunei pirate pond. It means that we are bearish on European stocks at the moment, okay, for the, for the long-term view. Downside target, immediate downside target is 30, 3300 and then uh, 3189, something like this. All right. Now, back to, uh, back to Asia, back to Asia, Japan, the K225, still we are bullish because the upward trend line is still intact. As you can see, uh, this blue line, another thin blue line, have you noticed that? The thin blue line is a 50 period moving average. Maybe you are very familiar with this one. And also the middle red line, the rising one, is a 20 period, in this case, 20 week moving average. All right. Now our pirate point is set at 21,000. At this moment, it is still trading on this pirate point. And that's why we are we remain 
bullish on this uh, index. Hey, you remember uh, what, what, what was the peak and when was the peak of Nikkei 225? It was at 38,000, 38,000 back in the end, at the end of 1989. Okay, so and recently it's rise, it's rise uh, breaking up of the 20,000 mark is very impressive. As I as I repeat and repeat, most of the Euro, uh, most of the Asian stocks markets, Asian stock index are following the following the big brothers of the U.S. stocks index. Same like this one. All right. Okay. Next, Hong Kong, Hang Seng, and uh, now I know I know today uh, these days we have a very strong rebound. Uh, now the price is is in the upward of 30,000, okay? And uh, in Hong Kong, we, we see the 30,000, we see the 30,000 level uh, as, uh, as uh, 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 anchor, an anchor, a remark. And uh, okay, so the still, still, we can see that Hong Kong stocks are uh, keeping an upright trend line in 10. In fact, this upright trend line is trailing along the 20 period, that is the 20 week moving average. Okay, our priority point this time is set at 28,100. Uh, 28,100. Okay, so um, yeah. Uh, I can I can tell you, uh, Hong Kong stocks is is also very very volatile this day, following the U.S. stocks. Okay, one one day it can drop uh, 500 points, 400 points, something like this. But as it rebound, it keep rebounding for several days, uh, two 200 points a day, 300 points a day. But all in all, we still are bullish on this uh, Hong Kong stocks index. Okay, so uh, A50, A50 uh, is about China. Maybe you, you know it better than I do. We, we think that uh, it, is keeping, it is keeping clear of the blue line, the 50 period moving average, where our pirate point is set, 11,900. Okay, 11,900. And they it also sold a very uh, resiliency. Uh, it rebound strongly, and now it's back up to levels above the 20 period, 20 week moving average. And we are looking at uh, 15,000, and then up to 16,600. All right. So this is uh, a 50. And other another China China index is the CS China. 120. Okay, it share the the uh, this maybe the same uh, the same shape. In fact, the same shape as, as the uh, A50, as you can see. All right. So now we we are confident that it will break uh, say its previous high at around 76 80, and then one up to 8500. 8,500. This is our uh, long term view. Okay. So we go on, right? Now, this um, maybe you, you are more familiar than I do, than I am. And uh, now, Singapore STI, Strict Times Index, and uh, same, and uh, it is rebounding. To revisit its previous high at around uh, 3,615. Okay. And we, we are confident that it, it will break above uh, uh, 3,700. 3, now, um, another technical issue I want to point out on this chart. Okay. Now, I, I introduce to you this Fin Bruna, this Fin. Red nine is 20 period moving average. This green blue nine is uh, 50 period moving average. Okay, 
Now, how about the other two red lines? This one and the lower one. They are called Bollinger Bands. The upper Bollinger Bands and the lower Bollinger Bands. In theory, in theory, 95% of the time, trading takes place within these two bands, the upper band and the lower band. Okay, when, whenever the, the trading get out of this, uh, get out of this band, either above the upper Bollinger band or lower than the lower Bollinger band, we say it is uh, abnormal and some change will happen. And at the same time, we, we seek momentum. It, this band, we can also show you at the momentum of those uh, stock index, like this one, STI. It, in this period, you can see that it keep uh, trading against the upper Bollinger band. We, we say this is showing upper momentum, upward momentum for the index. Okay, so STI and um, okay, MSCI Singapore about the same, about the same. In fact, uh, for for the Singapore stocks, uh, we we found that the Singapore stock it had this, it had they have a stronger rebound rebounding strength than other uh, other stocks in this, like the K like two to five and the uh, Hong Kong's Hansen. And um, I don't know why they are what they are. The Singapore stocks are we buy we bind much strong much strongly than the Hong Kong stocks. Okay. And uh, you can see that the 20, 20 week moving average is providing is providing support at this time. And for MSCI Singapore, we are looking at of course it will revisit its previous high nine nineteen thirty and then break up to 2000, okay? And our, our power point is set at 1660, all right? Now, Malaysia, uh, KLCI, the chart shows you very clearly that the index now is pressing, is challenging its previous high seen in 2014 and 2015, okay? And um, we are of the opinion that it, it, it is pointing to 2000. As you can see, uh, except, from, except from the uh, European stocks, uh, stocks market worldwide are uh, pointing, pointing to the upside. Uh, we, we are no doubt about that at the moment. And maybe some of you are also trading uh, India's Lifty, Lifty Index. And here it is. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that the red ascending 20 period, that is uh, in our case, 20 period, 20 week moving average is providing support to the index. Okay, so, uh, Maybe it it, uh, it 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 could uh, revisit its previous high and then going stronger. You see, most of the Aust uh, Asian stocks index are uh, showing relatively the same pattern, and uh, so so and the the driving force behind and 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 uh, and the example they are following should be the U.S. stocks. Okay, so now these are uh, uh, the index, Asian stock index I want to share with you today. And now we go to the second part of our webinar. Currency, uh, Forex, okay, which is also one of my uh, responsibility during my daily work. And uh, US dollar index, the US dollar strength, all right, we can see that, and you can tell me that, this dollar, US dollar index is trailing a downward sloping, or we call it a bearish channel. It is trading for this, in, within this channel for over a year, you can see. 
Now, at this top, maybe you maybe you know it that uh, after Mr. Donald Trump's uh, election as the U.S. president, the um, U.S. dollar peaked at around 103, and then for the whole 2017. U.S. dollars spend the whole year dropping, and now it is it is kept by the falling twenty period. It's twenty week moving average now in the stocks, uh, in in the U.S. stocks, uh, in the all, 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 uh, Asian stocks. You can see that uh, the twenty period moving average is providing support, but in this case. US dollar, it is providing a cap, a limit. Can you see that? And as long as this channel is intact, we hold a wheel of a bearish wheel on US dollar. Yes, I know, I know uh, there are there are, uh, people, there are investors sounding out these days that uh, the US dollar should not be so weak. Okay, look at this. Uh, U.S. dollar uh, uh, is now at around uh, three years low. At the three years low, it should rebound. But as a television, as a teleco and analyst, we have to say that as long as the teleco indicators, the configuration is bearish, we are bearish. Okay, unless it it turn around above this power point. 95.38 this is our power point okay we change our wheel we will change our wheel but but as long as the index is below this level we are bearish with this uh, index okay first target is in uh, is at 84.65 which was last in back last seen back in 2014 Okay. Now, uh, on this uh, U.S. dollar index, we we have an anchor. It means that we have a landmark, uh, 100. Okay, 100. We 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 um, breached the 100 point mark back in 2005. In recently, in 2015 and 2016. Okay, and then the U.S. dollar spent the whole of the 2017 dropping. That's why we are holding a bearish view on this one. Okay. So let me know. Uh, let me know. Email me if the US dollar index breaks above 95.38, then we will change our view. Sure. <laughs> All right. Now I'll give you another chart. US dollar index. It is a monthly chart. Just, just. Uh, uh, just one monthly chart in this webinar. I want to show you in, uh, in perspective how high US dollar index can go and how low it can go. Okay, in 1985, US dollar index is at 160. 1985, okay, 32 years ago. And it reached its lowest point, 71 in 2008. Okay. So, I uh, hope you you have a you have a perspective how it will run. Okay, so now we go to the foreign forest pairs, euro euro against U.S. dollar. Well, in fact, the euro, uh, the euro is taking about fifty five, uh, sorry, fifty seven percent of the U.S. dollar index. Okay, it will affect the. It, it is a heavy weight. It is a heavy weight in the U.S. dollar index, over fifty-seven percent. Okay, our point is, our will is, a key support, a key support that is the power point is set at one point one five fifty. This one. Okay, uh, it touched this. It, this level. This is a very key level. It touches level back in two thousand fifteen. 2016, and then boom, it broke about it. It broke above it in 2017, last year. Okay, and then it retest it, and then boom, it rebound again. And um, its next stop in our wheel is 1.26, 1.26. Uh, 
and then it and then if it keeps the momentum upward it will break about 1.3 okay so mine mine your downside if you if you if you watch out your downside it should be 1.1550 this one okay now in technical analysis we we can see that the price in fact the price in fact reflects it has decans uh, all the news. In fact, in 2017, uh, do you know what happened? Uh, in France, in France election, uh, they they um, they elect uh, Macron, and uh, rather than the far right, uh, the far right uh, party, okay, the far right party uh, advocates for abolishing the euro. Okay. Also, in other parts of the, like in the Netherlands, the the right the right uh, failed in the election, and so the euro just surged in 2017. That is last year. Okay. Let's see if it can reach 1.26. 1.26. If it is so, if it does so, 1.3 is in sight. Okay. Okay. Let's go next. British pound. All right, British pound, uh, which a which a 32 year, 34 years low back in 2016. Uh, know what happened then? Yes, Brexit, Brexit. Okay, uh, and that day I still remember it was uh, it was very horrible. It just dropped uh, well. Uh, Two large pawn or three large pawn, something like this. Three thousand, two thousand pips, something like this. And um, and now we can see that we can easily draw a rising trend line for pound, pound dollar. Okay, it is pound against US dollar. And at the same time, you can see that the rising twenty period moving average is providing support. Okay, now our next stop. Uh, is 1.4560, 1.4560, and then it will return back to 1.5. Okay, be careful. Our stop loss. Now, sometimes we call it a stop loss. The pirate pawn. That is the pawn when cross about this pawn, we change our view. The stop loss. We are we have set the stop loss at 1.2780. If it costs uh, this one, we will see the levels back down when uh, last seen uh, in the Brexit two years ago. Okay, all right, let's go. Japanese yen, dollar yen, we call this pair a dollar yen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I have to say that this pair is quite uh, quite tricky. Maybe you are trading this pair. You 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 would agree with me. And uh, in in times when the U.S. U, U.S. dollar is strengthened, the U.S. dollar against the Japanese yen, the dollar yen can fall. Okay. In times the U.S. dollar uh, uh, is weakening. For example, the uh, euro against the U.S. dollar is rising. This pair rise at the same time. So uh, I, I can say, and we have the experience that this pair is quite tricky, quite tricky. So be careful. At the moment, yes, we are bearish on this pair. Okay, unless we see uh, a cross, uh, we see a, a crossing above one eighteen point five. We we are still bearish on this pair. Okay, we we are looking at one one o five and one hundred something like this. Is is a uh, low point. Recent low point is around ninety nine, seen back in uh, two thousand sixteen. Okay. All right. Let's go. Dollar dollar franc. Uh, this is a uh, Swiss franc. Swiss franc, and um, you can see this one is uh, a mirror of the euro dollar. Uh, I can show you. You see, uh, on the on the trading day, when you see, on when you see the uh, euro against the U.S. dollar is rising, 
you, and you can be sure that this pair is falling, okay, uh, opposite side. And uh, now you can see that also, maybe now you know it better than I do. This pair is concentrating on the lower Bollinger Band, showing very strong downward momentum at the moment, okay? The 20 period moving average is below the 50, 50 period one, okay? And also the RSI, this is RSI, is uh, in 30s, okay? In 30s, we, we, we call it our overbought level, Oh, sorry, oversold level. But oversold level, we do not see uh, a reversal. We do not see a, a divergence, a bullish divergence. It means that we have to keep a bearish view on this pair, okay? Um, we are going to see next level, next support level would be um, 1950 and then 87, okay? Canadian dollar. Um, this one is also uh, is also quite uh, quite lovely. I can say it is easy to trade. Uh, am I wrong? <laughs> and um, for the past uh, the past half year, uh, uh, maybe in the second half in the second half of uh, 2017, the Central Bank of Canada raised interest rates for two times, and uh, the Canadian dollar just strengthened, and this pair, the reverse U.S. dollar against the Canadian dollar, uh, fell very hard. Okay, it once challenged the 1.2 level. Okay, at the same time, you can see that the RSI is also kept by a declining trend line. Yes, uh, we are bearish at the moment on this pair. And we see the leg stop downside target would be 119 and then 112, something like this. If if this pair breaks above the product point, we call it the key resistance up uh, overhead, overhead key resistance, we say we have to change our, our wheel to bullish. This key resistance is now set at 1.3150. This here, you can see that uh, this pair swing a lot in these two years. All right. In fact, uh, if if you it is it is uh, it is uh, very good to to have some knowledge of technical analysis. You see, this price is falling from its peak, and then we say this is a channel. If we if we after after completing passing this channel and it dropped and it emerged to the lower boundary of the channel, we know that it is a continuous continuation pattern. It means before if it is drop, it is dropping, then it will keep dropping up after passing through this pattern. Okay, maybe there will be some other times, some other chance I will discuss more on technical analysis patterns with you. All right. Now, next one, Australian dollar. Ah, good. We have another pattern. Uh, now, first of all, I have to say that uh, at the moment we are bullish on Australian dollar, US uh, uh, against the US dollar. Okay. Key support or pirate bond is set at uh, seventy-one fifty. Now, look at here, we have another uh, pattern called triangle or, or a wedge, or sometimes uh, sometimes people call it a coil, a coil, okay? A job, a passing through a coil, if it emerge on the upside, we, we are bullish then, okay? So what is the upside target for the moment? It is 84, okay? And then 89, okay? So, um, let me see. And then maybe this one you are more familiar than I than I am. This is a Singapore dollar, okay? US dollar against the Singapore dollar. And um, this last is a uh, very bearish at the moment. You can see, we 
there is another teleco analysis pattern here. One top and then another top, double top. And uh, it is, uh, it is uh, quite bearish at the moment. And the key resistance is set at 1.37. As long as the price is below, is below this 1.37, we are bearish and looking for target at 129.10 and 125.95, something like this. Okay, you can also see that the falling, the declining uh, 20 period moving average is capping any upside of the price. Okay, at the same time, the 50 period moving average is capping the 20 period moving average. So it is a very bearish setting configuration at the moment. All right, so let me see. Ah, yeah, I want to share with you uh, a, a few points, a few points about uh, about trading or something like this. Um, if you want to be more proficiency in in um, technical analysis, you try to read a lot of charts. Try and use some indicators, learn some more indicators, and yeah, get their meaning. And you you have you can have your own uh, trading system. I mean, your mentally, you you know how to trade when some particular patterns emerge. Okay, uh, the experience will come in bit by bit, and also um, wait for your winning setup. And uh, as I said, there are trends, there are channel. Whenever there are trends set up, you jump in when the trend we. When the trend reverse itself, you, you jump out or you trade the other side, something like this. And uh, you stick to your stop loss. I think um, most uh, most experienced trader will, will tell you so, okay? And don't argue with the market. Market is always right, all right? And also there are times, if you're if you're interested in uh, trading forest, there are times uh, when the uh, market, the forest market is more, uh, uh, is get so to more momentum. I can tell you it is the European uh, trading hours and also the US trading hours. Uh, look at them, look at those period of time. Uh, you see that the forest players move a lot and they, they are gathering momentum at, at those hours. Okay. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, any questions you want me to help? All right. So while uh, our guests are uh, um, uh, thinking of their questions for for Mr. Ming, uh, let me just share some uh, marketing messages with you. Um, first things first, uh, if you're keen to um, trade Forex, uh, you might want to check out uh, Philip Futures, uh, Philip Meta Trader 5 platform. Uh, we are offering really, really competitive and really tight spreads at up to 0 0.6 pips for the euro dollar. Uh, you know, to to have a look or request a demo, uh, let me just type the URL you can visit to uh, give our demo a try. All right, so uh, that's the URL. Uh, if you have um, any other feedback, um, uh, you can drop your uh, uh, query or any questions that you may have after the webinar. Uh, you may write them to futures at philip.com.sg. Okay, I'm putting that in the chat box as well. So you can um, drop us a note anytime uh, you have a query. All right, so Ming, you have two questions in the question box at the moment. Um, the first one is from Eddie Carisno and the second from yes. Luis. Uh, let me check. Uh, how is the how is the focus for US ten years? Uh, so, so we cover this today, uh, Sri? Yeah, sure, sure, go for it. Uh, okay. Yes, uh, for the 
10 years, uh, I, I, I'm, I think you, uh, the, the client, uh, the audience is asking for the bond price, right? And uh, we are seeing that, we are seeing that bond is, uh, is getting, uh, even, even if treasury bonds are getting uh, toppy. And um, you know that interest rates are rising, interest rates are rising. And um, it, 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 you can see that in, uh, investors are jumping into, into stocks at the moment. And they are leaving, leaving, uh, leaving the bonds, mark, leaving the bonds. I, I mean, the bonds is getting toppy, peaking. And uh, well, there are people saying that uh, as uh, last night, you can see that US stocks dropped over 1% after the new Federal Reserve ch uh, Chairman uh, Power Power say he 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 was he's upbeat about the U.S. economy, and and now people project that the U.S. may increase interest rates for four times uh, instead of three times previously. But um, and when when we talk about interest rates increase, people are scared, and you can see the stock market drop over one percent, but. But looking for the whole 2017, last year, we had three interest rate rises, okay? And at the same time, the Dow Jones Industrial was up 25%, okay? So um, don't, don't fix to the, don't fix to the uh, mentality that rising interest rate is bad for the stock market and uh, so on and so. And we can see that, and we expect that as I showed you in the chart, um, the US uh, stocks and also global stocks are rising and they will keep on that trend for the moment. Okay, uh, bonds, we, we think bonds are getting choppy. So be careful. All right. Next question. Uh, let me see. How do you decipher conflicting signal with indicators when you want to read the chart correctly? Now, um, now, uh, uh, yes, we are. Uh, can I go on? Um, uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead, uh, uh Ming. Uh, yes. just, just, uh, just, um, uh, you, uh, you, I lost you there for a moment. Uh, you might want to just uh, do a quick check of your mic. Other than that, I can hear you very clearly. Uh, okay. It, it's okay. Sounds good. Okay. So now, um. Don't be don't be uh, confused with those uh, indicators, okay? I tell you, you start you start with the most powerful indicators when you start when you begin, okay? The most powerful indicators are the average moving average, okay? The twenty period moving average, fifty period moving average, or or for the longer term you can have. 200 period moving average. These are all very good indicators. Okay, you start with the simple one, and you can see um, they they are very efficient for for your for your view. And this is my suggestion: start with uh, moving average first, and then you for more advanced level, you can you can look at the RSI, uh, MACD, something like this. I think. Uh, um you're okay with that okay so i will take uh the next question how you, how to uh calculate the pirate levels and also resistance and support level well um we we look at the chart and, and see which level they are concentrate and they visit mostly uh, in, in the history. And of course, we, we uh, also use some other advanced technical analysis uh, tools, just like a Fibonacci, Fibonacci extension and Fibonacci uh, extraction, something like this. 
And then uh, at the same time, at the same time, one point I, I have to point out, it is very important, is the uh, reward to risk level. Okay, so uh, you have to set a, a stop loss level that is from the point you enter the market to the point you, you say, uh, okay, that's it, I, I have to give up. This this amount is to be, if this amount is one, your target, your upside target is better to be two or three, okay? So this is also uh, the consideration we have to take when we set those uh, support and resistance levels. Okay? Sweet. Yeah, just wondering, Ming, uh, out of yes. curiosity, what's your view on gold? On gold, uh, let me see. Gold, we are, we are, in fact, we are, uh, have a goal is in opposite to the US dollar, in fact. And uh, we are looking for, we are looking for upward to, let me see, let me check, uh, gold. Sorry, I don't have to. Uh, let me have the chart here. Yeah, uh, if I, I can tell you. I can tell we we are we are bullish on gold. The U.S. dollar and the gold goes to the different direction. Okay, we are looking at uh, yeah. Um, there are people talking about inflation. Inflation and and go and sometimes uh, um, haven buying and go and um, we we well in fact we don't care much about uh, inflation and go and or haven buying and go we just look at the chart and uh, we we at the moment we are bearish about the U.S. dollar and at the same time we we are we are have a long view uh, means we are bullish on go okay. Whenever, whenever the U.S. dollar, the wheel, as I told you before, the wheel on our U.S. dollar change or U.S. dollar index change, it means the upper, the resistance is breached, and then we turn to be bullish on U.S. dollar. At the same time, most probably, we will turn to be bearish on gold. Sweet. Right. All right. So in the of the products that we have covered today. Uh, which product are you? Or which three products are you most excited about at the moment? Uh, U.S. dollars. Yeah, sorry, U.S. stocks. I can show to uh, U.S. stocks, uh, Dow Jones Industrial, and uh, particularly uh, last step, last step, uh, composite. Uh, I I am very very impressed by their resilience. Okay, they they are going to they are going to revisit their previous high, which was marked on 26th of January, and then searching higher, okay? So, uh, and also US dollar index, US dollar index. I showed you before, there, was, there is the um, bearish channel. If this channel keeps on intact, we keep sorting US dollar. However, if there is a, a reverse in trend, uh, breaking above this channel, we will be very bullish. Why? Because this channel has been in place for over a year. Whenever a long-term pattern uh, change reverse, we will jump to the other side strongly, no doubt. Sri? All right. Thank you so much, Ming. Uh, are there any final questions? Uh, if not, uh, we will uh, end today's webinar on this note. Uh, we will be sending you a follow-up email uh, tomorrow as well as uh, a link to the video uh, so you can revise uh, what we have covered today. Uh, meanwhile, uh, thank you so much for attending this webinar. Uh, and uh, we look forward to the next one. Uh, we should have one coming up next month as well. So do look out for that. And thank you for your time and have a wonderful night. Thank you, everybody.